In this video, we will talk about continuous integration, what it is and why should we care about it. And I will show you how you can set it up for your project. Let me start with the technical definition of continuous integration. First of all, what are we integrating? We are integrating code. We are integrating your code with your colleagues' code. Their code, when they commit it and push it, uh, CI, it's about having every push, every check-in, um, verified by an automated build. Um, which means to say, when I commit and push, some CI pipeline will run, run the test, um, and if anything were to break, if anything is not working, it will fail, and we detect problems early. So for example, here, I have my pipeline, and everything is working fine with every commit. You can see each commit is tied to its... Uh, you, you see each build, is tied to its commit SHA. This is the git commit SHA. And we can see that when something had broken, it was by uh, me. Um, and for this particular commit, we can then quickly debug it. And so uh, this practice of having every push verified by a CI pipeline somewhere, this allows us to catch bugs early and uh, fix them early. Imagine a world without a CI, right? So you, this is a typical maybe a typical code base, you have multiple notebooks doing multiple things. And how do we know that all of them are working? Um, first of all, if we have unit tests, we can run them locally. So we can know that, okay, you know, tests are passing. If we didn't have unit tests, we had to manually verify each one of them. For example, I might open this up. And how do I know that everything is working? I have to run it from start to end, right? So run, run, run. And now then we start seeing errors, like we wouldn't have known it unless we manually run it. So this is tedious and painful and probably nobody does this, like running your notebook all the time just to make sure it works. So the idea of CI is that you have your unit test, your code base is tested, and however you verify that it works locally. For me, in this example, I run the um, unit test and I might run a command called python train and these are the two things that I do locally to make sure that my um, training model training is working. I run the test, I run this command. And so whatever I'm doing locally on my computer, I can run it on some other computer somewhere. Okay, so um, that's the essential idea of CI. Having a computer run some command that uh, otherwise you would run locally. And you tell it to run with every push so that um, you know every time we check in something, uh, if something were to break, we know immediately, uh, within minutes, like what has gone wrong. So in the rest of this video, I will show you how you can set up your own CI pipeline. There are many tools that we can use. For this demo, I will use Circle CI. What you need to do is to create a Circle CI account at this website. It's free. And the next thing I will do is to create a Circle CI project. And the third thing we need to do is to create this file called config.yaml and after that, once we push our code, um, CircleCI will see that there's this file and it will run the commands that you specify in this file. So let's do it together. First, I've already created my account. Next thing I will do is to go and add a project. And this, you will see all of your projects here. And my project is called CleanCodeML. I'm going to set up the project here. And Circle CI helpfully gives you uh, some boilerplate. You can choose um, which machine you want to run your commands. And since it's just bash scripts, a uh, Linux machine will do. And you can choose whatever language your project is in. And that will create a, a sample config YAML file that you can use uh, to set up your pipeline. Okay. And they even have instructions here you can read in detail. So tell us to create a folder called circle CI, add this file, and you know, copy and paste it there. All right. So I have already done this. So I will just rename this config reference to config YAML so that circle CI can find it. And what you're looking at here is a syntax called YAML. And there are tutorials online to explain how the syntax is, so I won't go through in detail here. Essentially, we are telling circle CI to do a series of steps. First step is to check out, and the next step is to, yeah, this is some boilerplate uh, from CircleCI to 
uh, the Circle CI provider to cache um, the dependency so that uh, it's faster with every build. The next thing we do is to install the dependencies. We uh, create a virtual environment, we activate it, and then we install it. And we save cache. And the next thing that we do is to run the test. What I would have done is to run it locally. And now we're just telling another computer to run it. Let's say the, the way that I will verify this is working locally is to call this file. Then I might also do the same here. Okay, run uh, model training code. Once I activate the virtual environment, whatever I do locally, I can now tell another computer to run it for me. Okay. So once that's done, we are going to commit this file, write a commit message, and push. With every push, um, your uh, CI, Circle CI will pick it up and will run whatever you have told it to run in the config YAML file. Now with every push, because we specified this uh, Circle CI config YAML file, Circle CI will run the things that you told it to run. We told it to check out, to cache the stuff, to install dependencies, run tests, and run model training code. See this as exactly what we told it to do here run model training code. That's the name of the step here, and that is what it's done. And it's done so within uh, less than a minute, right? And we see that what I had used to do locally myself, now I can tell the computer to do it every time so that all of my teammates, whenever we check in code, it is tested. Um, and we are maximizing the use of this test that we have by running it with every check-in. Now, if I were to accidentally break something inside here, let's say we accidentally broke something. Well, the tests are breaking. It's just that, uh, let's say I forgot to run this test locally. Let's say my colleagues forgot to run this locally. And if we add it and commit it. And now, in a typical workflow without CI, I would have just wrote the code, introduced some bugs, and happily pushed it. And the only time that somebody will find out is when somebody you know actually tries to run the Python code and see like hey there's some bug right or maybe alternatively they run locally run the tests and then at that time maybe it's uh, you know a few days later and we have to go through all of the commits to see hmm where did it actually break you know that debugging process is tedious time consuming now on the other hand if we had CI it would immediately tell us that hey something is broken and it is this specific commit, and we can see why it failed. This test at derived title is failing. Instead of getting you know, all of these things, misses, now I'm getting miss. The feedback is fast, and within minutes, you get the feedback to know, hey, the latest commit broke something. It is this commit, so we can go and say, all right, tell me what, what's gone wrong. Like, ah, okay, this commit, I unintentionally broke this, let me fix it now. So coming back to the definition of continuous integration, this practice of having each check-in trigger an automated uh, test process in a computer on the cloud, this let us uh, detect problems early rather than spending time debugging uh, something that's maybe buried in other many other commits. And instead of spending time debugging some bug that was introduced maybe days ago or weeks ago, Every time we introduce a, a bug or error, when our tests fail, immediately we get that feedback. And this uh, reduces context switching and it increases our um, uh, productivity by you know, stopping catching bugs early so that um, we can fix them early. And in my other videos in this series, I've shown you how to write unit tests for your functions and I've shown you how to write uh, functional tests to assert that your model is above a certain uh, metrics like accuracy or RMSE. And continuous integration lets us maximize the benefit of these tests by running it every time and to help us detect bugs early and prevent bugs from going to production. And that's it for this video.